Welcome to another episode of Shop Talk. My name's Adam. Today, we're gonna to talk about telescoping gauges. Some people like to call these snap gauges also, but I call them telescoping gauges. I've had a lot of requests from viewers and in comments about going over some different measuring tools, and one of them being telescope gauges. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about those. And one of the, one of the purposes of talking about this and, sh and sharing this with you is I have a lot of people that ask me about my technique on how to use them and what my opinion is so I have my technique that I that I use whenever I use a telescoping gauge and one of the points that I want to get across to my viewers is that I'm not trying to teach you the perfect way to use a telescope gauge because everybody's got their own way to use it I've got my way that I developed uh, my dad taught me how to use a telescope gauge, but I kind of developed my own feel for it and my own technique on how I like to put it in a bore and pull it out. I've been using telescope gauges for 19 years now, and they work good. There's, I hear comments from people saying that they're not an accurate tool and you shouldn't rely on them. You should use other tools such as bore gauges, tri mics, inside mics, things like that. Those other tools have their purposes in the shop as well. But for everyday use, when you're boring out parts in a lathe or in a mill or wherever, telescope gauge is a perfectly fine tool to use. Once you develop the proper feel for it and the proper feel with a micrometer. We're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna to go over, I'm gonna use one of my mics and I'm gonna show you how I put a telescope gauge down in, into a bore, how I pull it out and how I hold it with the mic whenever I check it and the, the, the amount of pressure that I put on it whenever I'm reading the telescope gauge. So I've got a piece of tube here we'll use. This is some of that real nice like DOM tube, so it should be a nice smooth board that we can measure. I've also got a piece of brass there. I was looking for something like a honed ID tube and I can't find anything down here in my shelf. So uh, I know I'd like to get the camera and uh, maybe chuck up that brass in the Monarch and just take a nice little skim cut and then show you, we'll, we'll talk about how I measure a bore when I'm in the lathe over there. Kind of give you a, a you know, working pers perspective of it. So let's move the camera down here. We'll talk about this for just a minute and then we'll go into some techniques. So the first thing that we'll mention is that there's basically two types of telescope gauges. And these are all my good sets that I've, that I've got out here. This is a set made by General, and then this is your Starrett set. This is the one that you, you normally see me using, is this one right here. And uh, this is another set that was actually my dad's, so it was kind of passed down to me. I don't know a name, but I just know it's, it's made in USA. So the two types is, we'll start with the General set. You have, you have a single leg where one of your, one of your legs here are fixed it doesn't move the other one plunges inside the other okay so you have a single legged style I don't know if that's the general term but that's just what I call them of course you got your stare it this is, stare it makes them in both styles you can get either one and I prefer the single legged style and then you got this style here too which is the the dual you know the two legged style where both sides move and then some people prefer these over the single leg style. I just have always liked the feel of the single leg style better than these. I guess because only one arm, one arm is moving versus this style you got two of them that's moving around on you. But then again, whenever I started early on, this was the set right here that I started with and I, I used them all the time so I just kind of became familiar with this style and really liked it and always went to it this this old general set and it's still a good set i keep it in the drawer but i asked dad a while back it's been years now i was like dad will you get me a i want a set of stare at tel telescoping gauges and and uh so he got me a set of telescoping gauges we'll go ahead and look at the number real quick while we're talking about it number s 229g is this set right here Okay, so that's your, that's your two styles of telescoping gauges. And one other thing that I'll mention, uh, Starrett, you can, you can get different lengths of this from Starrett. 
So at work, I've got this same set. Actually, it's the double-legged style at work, but they have a 12-inch. They have a 12-inch reach on them, and I believe they make them. I believe this is the four-inch, and they have them in like six, eight, ten, and twelve. So the the 12 inch come in handy every now and then. you got to get way down inside something such as like a uh, one of those real deep pump housings that's got a bearing fit all the way down in the back of it you can use one of those to really easily reach way down in there you know and get your measurement because you got you got that long reach you get in there and get your measurement with it all right so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about my technique on how I how I use these all right so I got the piece of tube and set up in this little vise here to try to give you a little better angle of what I'm trying to show you so this will be our telescope gauge that we use right here to measure this and what I'm trying to what I'm trying to show you is is my feel I've seen people stick a telescope gauge up into a bore just any just any way even like sideways or crooked like that you know and pull it out just like that not giving any more thought to it and take a measurement and not even double check it but I've never liked I can go side to side like this and get good measurements but what I prefer to do is go up up and down like that I like to be vertically up and down most of the time whenever I'm doing my measurements, if I'm in a lathe or if I'm over in the boring mill boring something out, so, you know, something like that. I, I typically don't like to, to go in crooked like that or just reach up in here and just do like that. I, I've just never been able to get a good measurement like that and I don't like the way it feels and I don't trust that. So whenever I stick a telescope gauge in there, i am usually got my left hand over the part such as this and I'm gonna stick it in there, go ahead and collapse it, stick it in there, and then loosen it. And then what I'm doing is I'm pivoting on the bottom of the telescope gauge. I wanna pivot there. So you wanna kinda of wiggle it a little bit to get it self-centered. You wanna center it up and then snug it, don't over tighten it. And then usually what I like to do is I put my right hand under it and I take my left thumb and I push it down lightly until it just falls like that. Now sometimes I'm not careful and it falls and it kind of bumps the part and then I'll recheck it, but that's typically how I like to do it. I do it so much I really don't even think about it. You get it centered up and I just drop it out like that. A lot of people they just like to use one hand and they go in there like this and they and they pull it out and that, that might work for them. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, again, I was just trying to show you my technique because I keep having people ask me about it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go down to the lathe. I, I feel a little more comfortable standing there at the lathe and giving you a little better shot of how I'm going to measure this stuff up. I think we'll just go ahead and I think we'll just use this tube right here because it'll be round. That brass, I'll have to skin it out. All right, we got our test piece chucked up. So that what that is is a piece of two by two and a half DOM tube nice smooth bore in there I don't know if it's perfectly round but <clears throat> this should work for our demonstration purposes here so you know we go in there and we make a cut I'm in there checking it so this is this is what I do I go in there and loosen it tilt it back some you don't want to tilt it too far try to get it centered up and snug it lightly and then you see I'm taking my left thumb I'm gonna go ahead and put my right hand under it I'm going to catch it just like that. And then I'm going to check it with my mic. And we'll talk about this too on how I, how I hold the mic. So I'm getting, uh, let's say, looks like about one and a half thousandths under. We'll give it another check. Same measurement, one and a half. Okay, so you see how I'm doing it. it just feels comfortable to me to do that I just I use my left thumb and I push it down I feel like I get a better feel of the the sliding action of the arms there when I'm doing this and it feels like whenever I'm doing this 
I may be pulling it to one side or the other. Now, I'm, I can get a measurement like that, but this is my preferred technique, just like this. Okay? So getting about the same measurement. So let me move this camera a little bit, and we'll talk about how to hold the mic. All right, so after I get in here and I get my I get my feel with the telescope gauge, this is how I this is how I hold everything. So I'm going to hold the telescope gauge like this in my left hand, and I'm going to set it on the fixed anvil part of the the mic right there. Okay, I'm going to use my middle finger and my thumb, and I'm going to basically like hold it center on there. All right. And then you see where I've got my pointy finger up here just kind of cradling it to support it. So I got three fingers supporting the telescope gauge. Got the mic in my right hand holding it like this. Going to use your pointy finger to adjust the barrel. And I am not going to use the friction thimble. I never use a friction thimble on a telescope gauge. I want to just feel it. Feel it touch. All right, so we're going to come in there. I'm going to center it up with my two fingers there, my thumb and my middle finger, and I'm going to run that barrel down, and I'm rocking it back and forth like this until I just feel it start touching it. And what I'm looking for is just a touch, and I don't want to, I don't want to squeeze down on it, but I'm just feeling it touch and just lightly adjusting that barrel until you have it to where it'll basically stay like that but it'll just fall out okay now that one I got a little bit of a different measurement I got three under on that one right there but I wanted to show you that's that's how I hold the mic and the telescope gauge no matter what size it is the smaller ones probably a little different but the bigger ones you know I'll just hold it just like that and come in there And got two under on that one right there. Now I use these things every single day and they've never let me down. I I was gonna tell you a quick little story, you know, about this the way I was doing it just like this. I was at I was at one of the motor shops, this was years ago, and I had to measure an in bell. And I, I had my own tools, you know, brought my own tools over there. And I was doing this, you know, I was checking it, except I remember it was bigger. I was using the big telescope gauge, so somewhere between five and six inch probably. And I was doing just like this, you know, getting my measurements. And somebody had come up to me and said, you're not doing that right. And I said, what do you mean I'm not doing it right? He says, you're using a micrometer. You're supposed to ratchet down on it with the, uh, the friction thimble. That's how we do it. I said... Well, that's not how I do it. That's not how I was taught, and that's not how I've ever done it. And he was basically trying to tell me, like, well, you're getting a false reading because you're not reading your mic correctly. So all I said was, how many times you guys got to bring in bells back because I got the fit wrong? They never do. I mean, it, was, it never happened. So everybody develops their own feel. It's an, it's an important part of being a machinist or being in the metal trade where you're using micrometers. Yes, you need to learn to use the proper feel, but everybody's going to have their, their own touch and feel to it. You give, you give this to the next machinist, and he may be one or two tenths off from what you're reading just because of how you feel. But if you learn the proper feel, you can use a telescope gauge and a micrometer, and it'll be dead nuts all day long. So that's my little take on uh, how I use the telescoping gauges. And once again, I just want to remind you guys that my, my point with this is to, uh, you know, to help somebody with this because we have a lot of people ask about it. But again, remember that I'm showing you my way of doing it. And I'm, I'm in no way saying that my way is the right way to do it or the preferred way or the only way to do it. It's just the, the feel that I developed and it's how I use the tools and it works well for me. So. If it works well for you, use my techniques. <laughs> if it doesn't, then develop your own technique. Just try to remember a couple key things, you know, making sure that it's well centered and uh, not, don't over tighten this whenever you go to uh, pull it out of there. And 
don't over tighten your micrometer down onto it whenever you're measuring it. So hopefully that'll help. And uh, thanks everybody for, for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We're going to go over to some more topics here in the shop. We did have we did have a lot of requests for going over you know basic use on how to read a micrometer and other other tools around here so we need to go into that also leave me a comment if you want to see something else here in the shop that we can go over and shop talk and until then i'll see you on the next episode